In Path of Exiles 3.13 Echoes of the Atlas expansion, GGG buffed the absolute heck out of Elementalist. So what better way to play this insane ascendancy than the best ignite skill in the entire game, Firestorm, I mean Fireball. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I'm back with a booming build guide for the 3.13 Echoes of the Atlas and Ritual League release. Introducing the Fireball Ignite Elementalist, an Armageddon-fueled pyromaniac with a lust for destruction. Built so extremely easy on nothing more than a tabula and two Ash Caller Wands, this will zoom you through the early game and into the late game with a few choice pickups. In the patch notes of 3.13, this build got some pretty insane buffs, with the Elementalist Ascendancy getting skyrocketed into oblivion in its ignite power. Coupled with gems such as Flame Wall and even the unique mask Eye of Malice, this ignite fireball build couldn't be in a better spot. The gameplay you see in front of you is of a tier 13 map on some fairly decent gear, but with suboptimal links and gem levels, so the damage is even more insane in 3.13. Also, consider the differences in power from this current 3.12 Elementalist you're seeing here and the new one that is coming in 3.13. We can be dealing over 30% more damage than you see right now. In this build guide, we will go over everything you need to know, but down below is a special color bar in which you can jump to specific sections if you need to navigate. And remember, if you like this content, smash that subscribe button. 3.13 has brought over 1,000 of you new subs to the channel in less than 5 days, and I am eternally grateful for your support. Let's get into it. Alright, so what we're going to start everything with is the gameplay overviews for the Fireball Ignite Elementalist. Now, basically the gameplay is very simple. You throw your fireballs at enemies, fireballs hit the enemies, and then the enemies die via ignites. That's mainly how your clearing is going to go, however. So we do see, uh, we just naturally have like a, a GMP mana. linked to our fireball, meaning that we have five fireballs casting right there, which is pretty nice. However, uh, on bosses, you can switch in something like Swift Affliction for more damage, uh, or you can just still kill with uh, GMP, as I will show you, it's still super strong. However, on bosses, there are a few things you want to do. It is a multiple button build for bosses, but once you set everything up, you can kind of just ignite them, and then they'll just die. You can put your Orb of Storms down to proc Elemental Overload and Elemental Equilibrium. You uh, curse them with your Wave of Conviction Hex Touch, and also apply your uh, negative uh, Elemental Resistances. And then you also put down your spell cascaded flame wall to throw your fireballs through and then they'll deal even extra damage. So we're going to jump into this glacier map and I'll show you how the gameplay does go. Now this gear is fairly good but the map we are playing at the moment is a tier 14 map. But you will notice that as we jump in everything pretty much just dies if we throw fireballs at them. And the proliferation uh, from enemies walking through them afterwards is pretty darn nice. Honestly, you can even clear just with Flame Wall. It does enough damage to clear white packs. I'll even show you on this next pack here. So the, the Flame Wall will clear, and then we can just kill the, uh, kill the rare mob with our Fireball, which is pretty interesting. Put flame Wall down. Don't even need to use Fireball, honestly. It's pretty great. And that's without any links uh, as well. Um, now, I will show you on the boss what happens here, even with GMP, we'll have some pretty tasty damage that I can show you. And being an Ignite build, we can basically apply our Ignite and then dodge any of the rest of the abilities coming through to us. So let's just uh, let's just check this out, shall we? So there's a couple of extra mobs at the start of this fight here. We will just uh, plonk down right here. I'm going to set up my Orb of Storms right about here, put down my Flame Wall, Curse, and then do one big ignite there. We did take a bit of a chunk there, but you'll, you can see here that the ignite is starting to do lots of damage and almost dead there, and all we have to do is one more right there, and he's completely dead. Now, obviously, this is in a GMP setup, so if we had Swift Affliction in there, we would be dealing a lot more damage, around about 50 to 60% more damage right there with Swift Affliction. So that's how the build plays. Next, we're gonna jump into the budget gear and then the end game gear, and then talking about all of the links as well. Let's get right to it. Time for us to talk about the budget gear. Now, right in front of you, this is Path of Building, if you don't know, and there is a link down below. I am using a version of Path of Building that does not have the 3.13 updates right now, but when I do have those updates, they will be updated below. However, the way that I'm simulating the Elementalist Ascendancy 
is via these duels, the Elementalist Boss Duel and Elementalist Clearing Duel. So the boss duel here is just giving me all of the nodes that we will be taking on Elementalist, or the actual stats that they do give. And then the clearing duel uh, will give that as well there. Um, and, uh, oh, actually it's these ones over here. These are the correct ones right here. Uh, but apart from that, I've just got that duel in there to sim simulate the Elementalist. And we don't have any ascendancy points here, just to make sure that we're not double dipping in damage. But right here, this is the budget version of the build. You can see over here, our Ignite DPS is reaching close to 1 million on extremely low budgets. What I am going to do is tick off Cinder Swallow Urn there, because that's not that budget. Uh, but the Xeris Promise is very, very easy to get and will be quite cheap very, very early league. And the rest of the gear is almost nothing. We've got two Ash Caller Wands, which are practically no... Uh, no chaos at all. These are level 18 wands, and they give around about 16%, 17% more damage per wand. We've then just got a helmet with good life and resistances, using a tabula rasa so we can get that six link. And then honestly, the rest of the gear is just rare resistance and life gear. There is nothing crazy about this gear at all. Now you may notice over here that our dexterity is quite low. That's because I also haven't put any dexterity on the gear. That's because I like to uh, leave it up to you guys to be flexible in what kind of gear that you do want to put uh, all of your um, uh, uh, all of your dexterity on. And you can also take some dexterity on the tree as well. That's really going to help you. And then to finish off, we've just got a Quicksilver Flask, Eternal Life Flask, a Seething, and a Granite Flask as well here. Uh, without this Cinder Swallow Urn, you're probably very easily just going to be looking at something like a... Uh, uh, where, where is it here? It's the uh, Basalt Flask right here as well, we can tick that one on. So that is the very budget gear of this character. Next, we're gonna look at the end game gear, choices that you can make. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about uh, the links as well. So let's get right into it. All right, it's time for us to talk about the end game gear. Now this isn't crazy, crazy end game, like hundreds and hundreds of exalts. It's just a little bit more that's going to give you uh, that much more damage that is really going to help you through the end game. I will talk about a couple of things that will be uh, quite expensive that you could invest in if you do play this build for quite some time. First of all, uh, an end game staff is actually the Searing Touch. We're going to go from dual wielding wands to a staff. Now, the Searing Touch is super, super nice because it's giving a lot of damage above the Ash Claws. I think around about 40% more damage there. Moving to the helmet, an interesting choice that actually turns out to be the best option is Eye of Malice. Now, Eye of Malice, the reason this is so good is because with the new Elementalist buffs of lowering resistance of enemies even lower, Eye of Malice basically multiplies that uh, by an extra uh, 0.5, so 1.5, to increase that fire uh, deficit to then make them take even more damage. So Eye of Malice is actually giving us around about 20% more damage in this build. Now, uh, it's definitely not a tabula rasa here. We're going to switch to the end game chest. A good end game chest is basically just active skill gems level and maximum life and even a frenzy charge on hit there as well. So a good thing we can do over in the calculations is put on frenzy charges and it will increase our damage even more. Let me also just switch to the end game cluster tree here. You can see that it's very respectable. Uh, 4.3 million ignite DPS from the gear that we have right here. We can even then put on our cinder swallow urn to bring it up to 4.6. The gloves are fairly standard. They've just got fire damage over time multi with some life and resistances. And the boots are actually the same as our league start boots. We just want life resistances and move speed on those ones. The end game amulet is looking like a fire and intelligence skill gem uh, amulet, just with some good life, some good dexterity and some maximum fire res as well. The rings themselves have just got fire damage, uh, fire damage on them. This cerulean ring actually should be a uh, max life, not a max mana ring. So. I will uh, quickly change that one there, but just life and resistances is fairly nice there. And once again, a uh, topaz ring, life and resistances with fire damage on the top. Uh, the belt is, look, I, I just still kept the League Start belt, but you can just very easily go for a Stygian Vise with a nice Abyssal Jewel in there to even give you Onslaught. Uh, there's lots of interesting uh, plays that you can do with all of this. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about is the cluster jewels, because these are a part of gear. Cluster jewels are a big part of the uh, of the end game of this build, and they basically work with Eye of Malice in really, really interesting ways. So first of all, we're going to talk about the large cluster jewels. 
You just want th uh, two large cluster jewels, sorry, two large clusters with burning bright, prismatic heart and widespread destruction. Then your medium jewels are mostly the same. The first medium jewel that you're going to be going for is a brush with death to give you recovery of life on kill and damage over time multi. And then the other stat is just burning bright. However, the three other medium clusters is just going to be burning bright and cooked alive. Now cooked alive is amazing, coupled with eye of the malice, uh, eye of malice, sorry. For enemies ignited by you have negative 10% to fire resistance. That stacks three times with our three cooked alive. Uh, which then is multiplied by 1.5 with Eye of the Malice, uh, which is very, very interesting there. And lastly, the jewels. The jewels that you'll be basically stacking into the end of those cluster jewels is just going to look something like this. Three stats, maybe four stats if you can get very lucky with Harvest Crafting. The fourth stat that you would look for on these fire jewels is Burning Damage. That's going to help you an immense amount. Uh, and just to finish it all off, I do have a uh, staff that I did craft in the last Harvest League, this one right here, which does bring our Ignite DPS to a total of 6.7 million uh, on Fireball, which is extremely crazy. Now, this is not with uh, any Awakened skill gems or anything like that. It's just uh, just like this uh, with this crazy staff, Eye of the Malice. Uh, it's really bringing in some pretty insane DPS, as you can see. Uh, but enough of that. We're going to move on to the Lynx section. All right, it's time to talk about what skills we're actually using on this Fireball Ignite build. So to start off with, we're gonna talk about Fireball because that is the main skill. Now Fireball is extremely nice for Ignites and you wanna be stacking as much of that damage over time with the supports that you can. This is a single target setup, uh, but the uh, greater multiple projectiles right here is what you would use in, uh, in your clearing setup. So I would tick this one on and tick this one off. Still 4.6 million Ignite DPS with the GG staff. Uh, right there. So let's have a look. So it would go Fireball, and then in order we've got Deadly Ailments, Burning Damage, Ignite Prolif, and Combustion for a 5 link. Then on a 6 link you want to swap in that Swift Affliction. Uh, now Greater Multiple Projectiles is going to be replacing, uh, I would most likely say, um, either Deadly Ailments or Burning Damage, or maybe even Combustion here. You can choose what you would like to fit in there, but always have Ignite Proliferation in your links. This just helps immensely for your clear. Uh, moving on to the Aura setup and the Flame Wall setup. So the Auras we're using is Malevolence and Skitterbots. They are going to be reserving 85% of our mana, and that's all you really need there. We then want to use Flame Wall linked with Spell Cascade. Now, Flame Wall and Spell Cascade are just going to be another tool that we can use for clearing, and we can put them down on bosses and throw our Firewalls through to do even more Ignite damage, which is super nice. Then we move on to Wave of Conviction. Now, Wave of Conviction is getting linked with Hextouch and Flammability. Now this is extremely strong here uh, because as I said before, Wave of Conviction is applying your exposure and then that is coupled with the Elementalist exposure. And then flammability on top of that is reducing the elemental resistance of enemies by a crazy amount. If you do have a very, very big budget, what you can actually do is uh, use Awakened Hextouch at level five and then also actually use uh, Elemental Weakness. Now, Elemental Weakness in here as well is actually going to be giving us even more damage because that's coupling together, and Awaken Hextouch allows us to apply an additional curse. However, I'm just going to switch this back to normal Hextouch here because that's all we're looking at. First of all, uh, that's how that all works. Next, let's move to the Enduring Cry setup. It's basically just Enduring Cry, Second Wind, and Flame Dash. It's very simple. Second Wind supports both Enduring Cry to make, it, uh, make the cooldown um, and come back uh, quicker and then also supports flame dash to give you an extra charge and that cooldown recovering faster as well Next our orb of storms our orb of storms is just sitting here with increased critical strikes This is mainly just to both both uh, proc our elemental equilibrium and proc our elemental overload Now we do have to make sure that there is no added fire damage to spells anywhere in our build That's why we use malevolence over anger even though in path of building uh, Anger does give a little bit more tooltip DPS. We don't want that because it's going to give fire damage to our Orb of Storms and completely wreck our Elemental Equilibrium. So you have to make sure that uh, when you hover over your Orb of Storms in-game, there is no fire damage being added to that. Otherwise, it will muck some things up. And lastly, on our last links here, we have our Cast Wind Damage Taken setup. This is coupled with the Enduring Cry and the uh, charges we get from that, but it's Cast Wind Damage Taken, Immortal Call, Increased Duration, and Summon Flame Golem. 
Now the levels are fairly important here. You always wanna make sure that your cast when damage taken maximum level requiring level 58 is no lower than the skills that you are proccing. So I like to have it around about a level 11. You can choose uh, how you would like to use it yourself. Some people prefer even level one. Some people prefer level 20 for big hits. But with around about a 6.2K life pool, level 11 is fairly nice because it's about a third of your life pool. When you take a third of your life, you then proc Immortal Call to hopefully save you from some bigger hits as well. That is everything to do with the links. The next part that we're going to look at is uh, how to actually um, uh, set up the passive skill tree. So we're gonna go and talk about that right now. All right, it's time for the passive skill tree choices. We're gonna start with the new elementalist ascendancy right here. I'll tell you the points that I would like to take here. And then we'll talk about the budget uh, skill tree, then the cluster dual endgame setup, and then lastly, the leveling trees as well. But to begin with, all of the ascendancy choices are the same for all of the trees. So the elementalist uh, has got some really interesting buffs, but the ascendancy points in this order, or my personal preference for this order at least, is what I would like to go, which is Shaper of Flames for always igniting to begin with. We then move on to Mastermind of Discord to apply that exposure and get some regeneration of mana. Then third point, we're going into Heart of Destruction for our Merciless Lab and ending off with a bit of tankiness, Bastion of Elements right at the end there to really make sure that we're uh, gaining a lot of uh, damage mitigation against elemental damage, which is really, really nice right there. So that's basically the Elementalist setup. If you want, you can switch Bastion of Elements for Liege of the Primordial to get some buffs from Golems, but I would think just taking the first node here is not quite good enough, and I would consider uh, definitely sticking with Bastion of Elements to keep you alive. If you find yourself dying around the Cruel to Merciless Lab area, I would actually take Bastion of Elements instead of Heart of Destruction, and then lastly finish off Heart of Destruction in the end right there. Now, the budget tree itself looks a little bit like this. You come out of the Witch itself, uh, and uh, I have taken this spell damage here, but for Ignite, it's not really that needed, so you can save a couple of points actually just specking right into here, which I'm actually gonna do right now. You come right out of it into uh, Arcanist's uh, Dominion, get some life, Firewalker, and then straight into Elemental Overload. Uh, then basically picking up much fire nodes, much fire nodes, some area nodes, life, a bunch of life, a bunch of life, fire nodes, life, life, all the way down to call to arms, uh, and this over here. If you want to have a look at the actual progression itself, you can see right down in the corner here, we've got a progression points from 20, 40, 60, 80 to 100, and then the league start final tree right about here, which ends at level 89. So that is basically the League Start tree itself. For the Cluster Jewel tree, it's a little bit different. So we are losing a little bit of points over here and some life over here as well, uh, and a couple of bits of life here as well, but we're also gaining a bunch of life from jewels and these points on the tree right here. So the two Cluster Jewels you're gonna be taking is this one and this one. I did talk about the Cluster Jewels in the gear section. If you did actually skip just to this section, jump back, check the gear section out, uh, and the cluster jewels will all be there, the ones that we're correctly using. So that is the passive skill tree. If you have any questions, ask down below. The last thing that we're gonna talk about is how you actually level this build, and it's pretty simple. So let's jump over to that right now. All right, for the leveling process, this is how I would do this build. However, I'm also gonna link down below a pretty easy build that is unnerfed. Uh, that Tai Tai likes to use for spellcasters and a bunch of other races and everything like that. I'll, I'll link one of Tai Tai's runs down below so you can see what he does. But to stay in the theme of fire, this is how I level this build. We're gonna go act by act up until uh, basically act four where you get all of your gems and I'll show you how you would actually play this build. To begin with, uh, obviously you get Fireball at the start uh, of being a witch. So you would take Fireball and then at level four, you're gonna be taking Flame Wall. Now, that's going to be a super nice combination right there. To begin with as well, you're going to also be picking up an Arcane Surge to maybe link with Fireball. And then you're moving on uh, as you get uh, much further into Act 1, uh, right through everything, picking up a Combustion to then uh, basically put Combustion on your Fireball. Now, Combustion, Fireball, and uh, Flame Wall is going to carry you pretty much all the way through Act 1. Make sure you get a little bit of spell damage on your gear as well. Uh, that's pretty much it for Act 1, uh, and then we're going to move on to Act 2. 
Act two is where things start to get a little bit interesting. To begin in Act two, you're gonna be picking up a Herald of Ash, a Summon Skitterbots, and a Wave of Conviction. Now you're gonna need a couple of alterations for this at League Start. So make sure that you're picking up any rare items that you see, IDing them, and if you don't like them, sell them all so you can get the alterations to be able to pick up all of these. The other two things that you will be picking up, or actually only one thing, I completely forgot there, is basically only deadly ailments. Now this is going to be linked to your fireball right up until you start using firestorm in Act 3. So your three link is going to be deadly ailments uh, and fireball linked together with also combustion at the end there. Let's move to Act 3 where we get our firestorm. In Act 3, we're mainly going to be picking up our uh, flammability right here uh, at the beginning of Act 3, and then we're going to be moving to Malevolence. Now, you're going to be switching your Malevolence for that Herald of Ash that we did have at the start, uh, and this is going to mean that you'll be reserving around about 85% of your mana, so make sure you have a good mana flask there to really help with all that. That is actually everything that we are picking up in Act 3, so let's move to Act 4. And lastly, in Act 4, there's only a couple more gems that we will be picking up. So the first one that is very important right here is our Ignite Proliferation. This is going to mean that we're going to be able to clear a lot better. And then we're also picking up our Greater Multiple Projectiles. So I would say at this point, your links are going to be Greater Multiple Projectiles, Ignite Proliferation, Combustion, and Fireball. That's going to be really, really strong for you. And then Flame Wall is going to really, really help you through all of that as well. The other thing is definitely a Hex Touch. So you're going to be linking your Flammability and your Hex Touch with your Wave of Conviction. That's just going to mean that you're going to be able to curse every boss that you do t come across, and you're going to do insane amounts of damage. That is all of the main skills for leveling. Any of the other skills in the actual path of building, uh, you can definitely find in Act 6 when you get the Lily Roth uh, gender, uh, uh, sorry, gem vendor gender. Uh, as, as I like to call it, or you can even just at the end of Act 3 go and do the library quest and then you can talk uh, to the gem vendor there and get any of the other gems you need. Thank you so much for watching all of this. That was the leveling part and we're just going to finish up with a little bit of an outro. And to finish it right off at the end here, I just want to say another big thank you to all of you who made it to the end. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to be playing this build on League Start or whether you want to, you know, wait a little bit to see if it's actually going to be really good. Hint, hint, it is going to be pretty darn strong. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for builds that you want to see. And as always, if you enjoy this content, that subscribe button down below is the best thing to hit. If you want to see some live gameplay, then you can definitely jump over to twitch.tv slash thisisbadger, uh, and I'm going to be streaming a lot, a real, real lot on League Start uh, to bring you some really, really good content. Who knows, I might choose this for my League Starter, but I have a couple of other things up my sleeve as well that I might be sharing with you guys in the next day or so. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Badger, out.